Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another Shin Megami Tensei 5 video. This time we're going to be talking about the demon fusion mechanic as a whole, the different types of fusion, and why you should be fusing your demons. Now this guide will especially be useful to you if you're a newcomer to the SMT franchise as we'll be going over the basics in a simple and concise manner. Now if you did stumble upon this video but also wanted information about essence fusion, miracles and glory farming, or just wanted some general tips and tricks, you can check out any of these videos linked below. And don't forget to subscribe for more SMT and monster taming content. And with that let's dive in. All right, so to access fusion, you have to have unlocked the World of Shadows, which will be unlocked through regular play. Upon entering, you'll have a few options, the most relevant here today being Demon Fusion, of course, and Demon Compendium. First, let's start with Demon Fusion. Here we can see four options. Dyad Fusion, which is essentially your normal pick two monsters and get the results type of fusion. Then you have Reverse Fusion, which will show you the potential outcomes of all the demons you have. I find myself preferring this method as it neatly shows you which demons you could obtain and they're all in order of highest to lowest level. Then you have Reverse Compendium Fusion, which essentially will give you all of the outcomes of all of your current demons, plus any demons that you've registered in the compendium. More on that in a minute. Then finally, you have Special Fusion, which consists of fusions that require specific demons and sometimes even three or four to execute. The special fusion monsters tend to be much more powerful than your typical demons and are generally unavailable any other way. To unlock special summons, you have to complete various quests. Now, there's a couple things to keep in mind when fusing. The first is that the result of the fusion will inherit most of the moves from the demons fusing into it. There are some exceptions, though, with some demons having race-specific moves, so keep that in mind as well. Some demons will also have positive and negative affinities that can be represented by a plus or minus sign, which are also important to keep note of. If your demon has a move with a plus, this means that the move in question will use up less mana, and if it has a minus next to it, that means it'll use up more mana. So in other words, plus is good and minus is bad. Now back over to the compendium, and subsequently the reverse compendium fusion, this is sort of a convenience-based system that in most cases may not be favorable due to the cost of summoning, but can be a time saver, basically stopping you from having to go back and look for demons that you've already captured in the past. Now, the compendium itself has two separate options. You can register current demons, which saves their levels, moves, and such so that the next time you summon the demon, it'll be exactly the way you left it. And you can also summon these demons by going to View Compendium. In order to summon them, you'll have to pay a certain amount of maca. This can be especially useful if you have a demon that you want to make out of a fusion, but want to also keep one of those base demons so you can register the demon, fuse it, and then resummon it. Stacking off that point, if you have registered demons that are not currently equipped to you, you can utilize the reverse compendium fusion to resummon and fuse the demons in question instantly. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of how the various modes of fusion work. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is, when in reality, it's actually very simple. The big thing you have to keep in mind is that you cannot create a demon that is a higher level than the Nahabino, aka yourself, without a fusion accident, which is essentially this off chance of getting a random demon with random skills, and potentially a higher level than yourself during a full moon. This is one instance that can either make or break your fusion, so if you're feeling lucky, fuse during the full moon. If not, stay away from it. Now, why fuse your demons to begin with? Well, fusion basically just turns the demons into a new demon. It's not fusion traditionally in the sense that the two demons would become like what we'd see with Digimon fusion with Omnimon. You can actually find a lot of these fused demons in the wild, but there are a few benefits, including getting a new demon with better moves, getting a much higher level demon, getting getting demons that you can't otherwise obtain, especially like I mentioned with special fusion. There's also the situational aspect of needing a specific set for a certain boss and more. So yeah, you should now be equipped with just a very basic understanding of how fusion works and the benefits to it. I do hope that this simple guide was useful for anyone new to the franchise or those just wanting to know how fusion works in SMT5 specifically. There are tons of combinations, a downright absurd amount, and perhaps if it is highly requested, we will go into some of those combinations in a future video, but this is more of an overview, if you will. I can't stress how much I'm loving SMT5 right now, and I will have a more spoiler-focused review ready for you guys soon. I was originally going to go for the month anniversary of the game's launch, aka December 11th, but I may have it ready sooner, so we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, if you guys do enjoy monster taming videos or just Shin Megami Tensei content, definitely subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, Gym Leader Ed and check out our Discord, all links will be below. Special thanks to our patrons, especially Jim Hamilton and Steel Case, our mythical backers, and we'll see you guys next time.
Peace.